Hey guys, you're watching Crash Course. I'm Shaft with Polygon Gaming, and I've got a extra special episode for you today. The goal is to keep these videos fairly brief and more as reference material than anything else. As you know, at least if you're a returning visitor, I really point to this thing called the Triforce model quite a bit, and every time I do it, there's always some kind of miscommunication or assumption or questions. And I just kind of want to establish a baseline that clarifies a little bit of what this is and how to use it and what kind of tool it is. So the goal of this series is to look at the Triforce model and how it applies to openers. There are different stages of every game. Every game has different stages. You go from your opener to the whatever succeeds your opener, to the mid game, to a transition from the mid game to the late game, and there's all kinds of things in between. We could go into inordinate amounts of detail on defining such a thing, but I think it's more important rather than to do that because that'll change with every build order, every shift of the meta. I think it's better to define a protocol for analyzing it on the fly. So let's go ahead and pop the Triforce model up on screen. As you see, there are three different broad categories, Army, Technology, Economy. We can go into these in far more detail in their various sections, but essentially you can't invest in all three. If you do, that's a rainbow build. Those don't work in StarCraft. StarCraft's all about emphasizing one part of the game at any given phase and gaining advantages with that. So if you were to do an army opener that emphasizes the army as your opening, that's pretty much called an all-in. So that's what we're going to focus on on this series, on this part of the series. So you've got two options once you choose to put all your eggs in the army. By the way, we'll highlight that green. Now for our secondary, we're going to highlight that yellow. You've got two options. You've got economy, you've got technology. And those are different. What I want to look at first is army and technology, because this is the most powerful. It's the most all in. The other one can transition a little bit better. So if you are emphasizing army and technology, the thing you are least emphasizing is economy. That means that as you mine out, your game becomes more and more over. The first example we're going to look at for this is a Reaper Rush, where you see Dust Bunny is pumping out as many Reapers as possible. Now this is Paladino Terminal, and Sue, already aware that Reapers are a favorite on this map, he opens with a little bit of an army emphasis himself in a pull first build. So both of these players have initially chosen to put high emphasis on army. Now, when you do go for army, this is a battle for map control and a battle to stay alive. Whoever makes the least army trying to stay alive, whoever makes the most army trying to gain map control and force his opponent not to be able to take the next base. So that's really what it comes down to is map control. You get the map control at an economic and or technological cost. It's important to either end the game or at least secure map advantage before a transition can occur. In this case, the Zerg doesn't lose his natural. He doesn't lose any of that space. So the map control doesn't exactly work out to what Bunny wanted. The next phase in this build order has to kind of flip-flop. So right now, We've seen Bunny favoring a Reaper, and that's technological, but it's also Army. So now in the next phase, he's going to you know keep making Army because he's got to have map control. He's got to be able to hold his natural, and he's already got what he's invested in technology, but you see he's going to emphasize Marines at this point. So you could say that while he opened Army Tech Economy, he has now flipped it to Army Economy Tech. Whereas his opponent, Sue, went for pull first into hatch. He skipped that gas initially. So he opened Army Economy Tech, where his opponent was Army Tech Economy. 
And now we're seeing it flip-flop because now he's getting the link speed. Now he's getting the Bane links. And this allows him to shove his own army across the map and take map control of Bunny's natural. And that's actually what ends up killing Bunny. Bunny cannot expand because Sue owns the map. It's actually really, really cool the way it works. It will always flip-flop. Something else Bunny could have done would, behind all of this aggression, be to make a factory. Rather than trying to take the two CCs that he does, make a factory, maybe even get a starport, go for like either some cyclones or some liberators as a follow-up. He will never get that natural, but he might have a chance of killing his opponent. But that would be the most all-in of all-in options. As it is, Sue did a great job in a number of ways. He held off all this technology with nothing but minerals. So that's using your economy to beat technology. Minerals beating gas. You could literally think of it that way. Uh, queens don't cost larva and cost minerals. So he's able to drone behind all of this while continuing to make nothing but mineral mining things. Eventually he's going to get the gas and start getting the bane links, start getting the link speed. But link speed really isn't going to be that beneficial against this number of reapers. In small numbers, that can help you get the map control, but really he's going to need a combination of army and technology to be able to compete with the reapers. So instead of that, he just focuses on his army and his economy and holding his own side of the map. He's never going to move out of his own part of this map, until he determines that he's ready. And that's gonna be based on when Bunny tries to take this natural. It's all gonna come down to controlling the natural space of your opponent. In our next example, we're gonna be looking at a Forax proxy. This is going to favor army economy technology, only this is a little more on the all-in spectrum. Because of its nature as proxy, you're giving up map control at home for more map control on your opponent's side of the map. Now this creates a little balance shift where if your opponent can get to your base, you're in a really bad position. And that's actually what we see end up happening here with some links swinging into the mineral line. The SVs can't really do all too much about it. But throughout this battle, you see a non-stop army coming in and doing a lot of damage to the Zerg. This is forcing the Zerg to try to use his queens, his lings, and ling speed to his advantage. But this is still a mostly mineral-based defense, mostly economic. Um, but the ling speed is faster, and without it, this would have looked a lot different. So we're seeing the technological aspect from our Zerg's defense. And this bunker is going to help these Marines stay alive. You see them kind of positioning for map control of the ramp, moving down to the natural, can never really kill the natural because the lings with speed and the queens are there to, to punish that. They can never get really too deep into the main for the exact same reason. So the Zerg is doing a great job using lings and link speed that technology to hold this defense and then using that same technology to sneak links multiple times into the main base of the Terran at one point the Terran looks like he's actually going to pull the boys bring those SCVs down and use them to keep the Marines alive as he goes completely all in and that is one option that is one part of the spectrum that's like an army 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 emphasis but still, there's no gas taken. This is not a technological emphasis. Something that would look like more of a uh, full out army economy opener would be something like a 12 pull with no gas, no baneling nest follow up. Just going straight out with the 12 pull and leaving all the drones at home to defend, getting a natural and then taking the gas. That would be more of an army economy emphasis on the less all-in spectrum. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about 
the economy side of investment. So if you make the economy your top priority, what it would look like for technology and army to be kind of secondary. We'll go more into the details there, but for that video, I think it's very important to really get into the detailed definitions of technology. And I'll do that a little bit more in depth there, but for our purposes here, I don't want to leave you guys not knowing what technology really refers to. There are two different types of technology. You've got something that makes your units better and you've got something that makes your units different and you can spend gas to do either. So let's talk about better units first. You've got Marines, right? They're great. Give them stem pack. They're even better. Give them stem pack and plus one infantry at five minutes and they're nearly unstoppable. That's making units better. And you'll use Marines in ways that you won't use other units. You'll use the drops. You'll use uh, all kinds of tactics. But you also could choose to go for faster liberators. That was the bane of Zerg when Legacy of the Void first came out. And those units are, have tactical uses that are way different than what just Marines would offer you. Hell, even getting the medevac off changes the uh, tactical options with more emphasis on dropping and hitting your opponent where he doesn't expect you to be. You've got these two definitions and it's always going to determine how things work. So I know there's going to be at least one smart ass in the comment section who, you know, love you guys, love the trolls, trolls, <laughs> Polygon Gaming wouldn't be Polygon Gaming without them. But um, there's going to be one guy in the comments who's like, none of this applies to a proxy Thor role in. And of course, you know, you'd be right. But this does give you a framework to understand it. And in fact, I would argue that the Thor all in should be included in video number three because the emphasis isn't on army then. You've got one army unit. So the emphasis was more on technology to get you that army unit as fast as possible, right? And uh, you could say tech, army, economy might be the option there. We see people like Alive using styles like that quite a bit. So this is really just intended as a framework. I hope you guys will understand that. I'm not trying to say all ends are bad or you must macro or you must get technology. What this is, is a framework for newer players to come in and just understand our terminology and understand why certain builds work and other builds don't. And why some builds, which are typically bad, can be good in certain situations. Alright guys, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. I hope you liked this video. If you do, please hit the like button at the bottom and share it with your friends. It really helps the channel a lot. As some of you may be aware, we recently lost some of our funding because, quite frankly, we're the free speech organization of StarCraft and not everyone agrees with our message or you know our symbolism or some of the things that we stand for uh in, in the community if you like what we do and you want to support us and you want to help us become more independent where we can continue to do and say the things that you and we believe in please consider donating to us once a month on Patreon. There are a list of goals and rewards for you guys to peruse. This is part of our series called Crash Course, an educational series mostly for Zerg, but a little bit of a treat for everyone when possible. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not gonna teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.